Well, it's time to continue our 2018 gardening tour at FBP. Catch you up on what we're doing. This will be episode six. I just about have everything planted now in the garden. I still have okra and my sweet potatoes yet to do, but everything else is out and planted. So today I'm gonna to take you along and show you three things. We're going to be fertilizing two different ways, and I'll show you why and how as we go along. Then, I'm going to be spraying for fungi. It's past time to do that again. We've had so much rain, so that will be something I will be doing. And when I do that, that spraying, I also go ahead and use that opportunity to prune because that way I don't have to sterilize my pruners or my hands between cuts. So today I will be pruning the tomatoes and showing you how I like to prune the suckers using the Missouri method on the indeterminate tomatoes. Well, pause. I'm trying to get used to this new mic thing that I have, this external mic, and I'm not going to be able to show you the part about pruning because I plugged the mic in to my iPad, but I forgot to turn the mic on. So, That'll be saved for a future video. Look on the bright side. At least this video will be shorter. So, let's get started. Growing, growing, growing. Keep them doggies growing. Growing, growing, growing. Fertilize. Don't try to understand them. Just feed them, smile, and plant them. Soon they'll be living high and wide. <laughs> yes, songs for everything. This corn was planted around the 1st of May, if I looked correctly, yeah, about three weeks ago. It's had a lot of rain, and we're going to continue to get rain. As you can see, the bags had settled some. So, I am adding the ring of fertilizer. And now I'm filling the bag back up with mix. With corn, you can actually add somewhere between three, four inches on top. That's okay. Make sure your bags are, are full. Now, what fertilizer to use? Well, in the recommendations, you can use a synthetic fertilizer, granule fertilizer, 10-10-10. I like to go with organic. So, the organic ones that I use are well, the basic one is a 555. So I double the amount. I use two cups of the 555 instead of one cup of the 101010. Now, with corn, they need a lot of nitrogen. So, well, phosphorus too. So your basic 101010 or 555 is is a good one to use. Notice that I'm applying the fertilizer just around the outer edge. I'm avoiding getting it close to the plant. Just don't want to burn it. And anytime you add the fertilizer ring, you need to go back and put dry mix on top of it. But with this corn, I cover up my ring first. And then I can fill the bag the rest of the way up here, like I said, up to 
three to four inches to make sure I've got all that corn and these stalks well supported. They have been bending over a little bit with all the wind and rain we've gotten. Now timing wise, like I said, these were planted three weeks ago. I could have fertilized them uh, at least a week ago without it being a problem, but because we had so much rain, I decided to wait until now. We're still going to have rain, but at least it's not solid rain. It just seems to be periods of rain. So, you don't water your fertilizer in. You let the rain do that for you. This will be happening, getting watered in probably today. Now, I'm just going to add my mulch on top now that I've got my fertilizer and everything down. Now what should you fertilize? Well, you need to fertilize heavy feeders, which is probably going to be about most things in your garden. Corn, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, melons, squashes, cucumbers. Those are all heavy feeders. When should you fertilize? I always wait at least a week or two after I have planted them, transplanted the seedlings into their permanent homes. The reason for that is because they deal with a little bit of shock anyway being transplanted and you do not want to risk shocking them more especially if you have rain with a whole bunch of added fertilizer right quick so it's best to let them get established before you add fertilizer and by that i mean granule fertilizer there are other forms of fertilizers both foliar feeds and root drenches which we'll talk about when we get down below. For tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, the organic fertilizer I like to use is Dr. Earth's. It has a little bit different numbers on it, 463, and I explained before in one of my other videos that I like to use this fertilizer for the nightshades, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, because there is a generous amount of calcium in here which they need. Now these, egg, these were planted two weeks ago and when I planted them, I filled them up to the brim. That was in a video also. Put my mulch on and the foil. So now in applying the fertilizer, they are already full to the brim. It's gonna be a little hard to add mix on top of it. So I'll show you how I apply that when I've got this situation. I'm just going to pop my foil up and scoop my mulch in and then kind of dig me a little bit of a tunnel on the edge here just kind of move my soil up toward the middle and then apply my ring again on the outside edge in that little ditch I created. Push my soil back down and add some additional mulch in there and then just push my foil back down like so. Other than granular fertilizers like we're using in the ring around the top of the buckets for the heavy feeders, you can also feed a different way, either a foliar feed or as a root drench. Now when I plant, well transplant every plant in my bucket and it's time to water it in, I do not use just plain old water. You can, but I like to use one of two things. I either have compost tea that I've brewed, and if I don't have my compost tea brewed, because it does take 24 hours, and sometimes I just kind of don't get to it, then I like to use Neptune's 
fish emulsion and seaweed fertilizer. This is Neptune's. Great brand of fish emulsion and seaweed fertilizer. You use one ounce in a gallon of water. And you can feed it, as I said, as a root drench or as a foliar feed. And by the way, with all of the products that I use, I've started to create kits so that they're easy to find when people ask questions and want links to where I purchase the products. So I've actually made a pretty easy website that links to the kits. It's pretty easy to remember if you can remember my first name, Janet. It's JanetsPicks.com. JanetsPicks.com. So if you go to JanetsPicks.com, it will take you to my kits. Right now I have four kits up and you can find all the various products and things I like to use there. So let's talk a minute about a foliar feed. How does that work exactly? Well, you need to know a little bit of science about plants to understand why that even works. Every plant, the leaves, have something called stomatas. So a stomata is a microscopic pore, P-O-R-E, and it's functions in two ways. The first thing it's supposed to do is to have the gas exchange from the air taking in the carbon dioxide and with the carbon dioxide and sunlight and water it will, com it will convert that to chlorophyll through photosynthesis which the plant then takes up to change to sugars and blah 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 to grow bigger and grow your food, fruit and vegetables. Okay, so that's one function. And the second function is to keep the water from evaporating too fast. Now, the stomatas, you're mostly going to find them on the underneath side of the leaves with plants that grow on the land. With aquatic plants, aquatic plants, um, you will find the stomatas more on the top of the leaves. Obviously, you can't see them. They are microscopic. In addition to the stomata, there are some other little cells called guard cells around the stomata and when it gets too hot or too windy it will close up that stomata and tell it basically hold on to that water don't let it go the hotter it gets during the day the more likely the guard cells are closing up that stomata so when you are spraying a foliar feed it is best to do it early in the morning and remember to hit those underneath sides of the leaves and the stems um, as well. This row right here of plants are winter squashes. They were planted six days ago. So even though they're heavy feeders, they are too young, in my opinion, to put the ring of fertilizer on right now. However, I do want to feed them because we have had so much rain and we're going to have continued rain for the next 10 days, every single day off and on, a chance of it. So I want to give them a boost. Probably by next weekend, I'll go ahead and add the ring of fertilizer, but since I'm out here doing things, I'm going to foliar feed using the Neptunes. Update on the yellow solo cups. They are catching lots of bugs. No bees, no butterflies. As the research indicates, bees and butterflies are insects that are too big to really get trapped in this Tanglefoot product. I have not seen any of the moths yet that I'm trying to catch, those squash fine borer producing moths, but we are catching bugs. Beans are one of the vegetables that do not need additional fertilizer. So they only have what was in the basic mix with the compost. Now with all of my mixes, I use method two now. So we do add fertilizer to the mix. But even though you're doing that, adding fertilizer to the mix, you still would want to go back and add your ring of fertilizer on the heavy feeders. My heart's calculating, big veggies will be waiting. 
Waiting at the end by my side Growing, growing, growing Growing, growing, growing Fertilize Oh, rainy sound. Bye, y'all. Have a good one.